If there's one fundamental tool that most people agree on when it comes to organizing everything in their life, it has to be the digital calendar. And my choice for the last few years has been Google Calendar after I ditched Apple Calendar. And since that time, I've accumulated a bunch of helpful tips that I wanna share with you today. If you're new to Google Calendar or if you've been using it for a while. I have timestamps below if you wanna to jump to a specific tip, but let's get going. Hey, what's up? My name's Irfan and this channel is all about taking a gentle approach to productivity. So your calendar should really encompass everything in your life, including work. So if you're like me, in the last few years, there's been more meetings at work than ever and at the same time, you're probably doing some personal tasks during your work hours. So doing laundry, going for a walk, things like that. And I think it's so important now to have a unified view of everything that's happening in your life. So in this first tip, I wanna show you how you can synchronize Outlook to Google Calendar. I think Outlook is used widely by a lot of organizations, so I think this is a useful tip. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so I have Outlook opened on the web. I think you have to do this on the web to get the shared calendar link. But what you'll do is you'll be on Outlook and you'll click on this gear icon. This is the settings, you'll click on that and you'll wanna go down and go to view all Outlook settings. So click on that. And then you'll wanna go down to calendar and you'll go to shared calendars. And this is where you wanna go down to the publish a calendar and you'll be able to grab a link and put that into Google Calendar. So what we'll do is we'll select the calendar and this is an example. So I just have calendar here, select permissions and you wanna do view all details so you can see what the events are. So if you have a meeting, you'll know what that meeting is and what time. And then you'll click publish and then you'll get two links and you wanna get this ICS link and you'll copy that link, copy it. And then you'll go into your Google Calendar. And what I'll do is I'll go on other calendars and I'll press the plus icon and I'll do from URL, I'll paste this. And you wanna add to calendar. One caveat here, is that certain organizations will restrict this ability. So if, if that is the case, it's really unfortunate my organization has the same issue. The only other way around this is to sync the other way. It's not ideal, but that's sort of the only option you have. I will post a link to the other synchronization if you really do want Google Calendar synced to Outlook. But right now what I'm doing is I'm just looking at my Outlook Calendar at the same time as my Google Calendar. Just the state of affairs right now. Tip number two is to learn the different keyboard shortcuts for Google Calendar, specifically all the different views. I think this is really important when you're on Google Calendar, you wanna look at a bird's eye view as well as zoom in as much as possible, especially to your day. So if you go to shift question mark, you'll get the keyboard shortcuts and really the ones that I think are the most important are the ones that are under view. So you could do one through six for the different day, week, month, but I actually think the other way around, pressing day for day, W for view, M for month, makes a lot more intuitive sense. So that's what I would preach. So this is really, really simple and you should be utilizing this when you wanna look at your day. So if you go to day, so today is June 12th, but if I, want, if I wanna look at the week, I can press W and I'll look at the week. I also have a custom one for X and that's for, for me, that's two weeks, but you can customize this to like three weeks or nine days but this is my view for two weeks. And then you could do month view, you could do year view, and you could do agenda view, which I think is also really nice to see what your agenda looks like. So definitely learn these and have these in the back of your head, especially as you're planning your week, it just helps so much to look at the month view, like what does my month of June look like? What does my day look like? What does my week look like? This helps so much and they're so simple. So know these keyboard shortcuts. I think they're very intuitive as I've just told you, you should know these now and you should be using them all the time versus going up to the tab up here and clicking on day, week, month, year, and so on. Tip number three is to have different calendars for different buckets of your life. So let me show you my calendar. So I have five different calendars within Google Calendar. So I have my default calendar, which is called Irfan's Events. So you can see what that looks like. And I actually color code my calendars. So if you go into the three dots here, yeah, you can use the standard colors, but I, can, I love using custom colors. So you press this plus icon, you can put in your own hex code. And there's a great website called Color Hunt. 
Uh, so Color Hunt gives you different palettes, so you can look make your calendar look really nice with different colors that match. So I have my calendar set to this nice pastel green color. You can also have subcategories within a calendar. So I am always going into the office on Tuesdays and it's a recurring event. So I put that in red. It just sticks out that I'm going to be in the office on Tuesdays. But that's my first calendar. I also have my birthday calendar. The days of using Facebook are kind of over for me. So I like to be very intentional and put down actual birthdays where I wanna plan something for that friend or just wish them uh, when their birthday comes up. So you can also get notifications for these birthdays a day before they happen or the day of. So I have this set up. So if I go to my settings and I go into my birthday calendar, you will see that I have this set for notifications, all day event notifications. So this is for my birthday calendar. I have it zero days before at 9 a.m. So I'll know that. And then one day before I'll get an email as well that, hey, my friend's birthday is coming up. So this can this is a recurring event that basically never ends unless that person dies, I guess. I don't know. So I'll go back and I will go into the other calendars I have. So I'm gonna go to week view and show you what my fitness calendar looks like. So I am really into working out. And for me, I like to slot in my workouts in. I like to put these nice emojis here with the running icon and the lifting icon. This really helps me kind of distinguish which days I'm lifting versus where I'm running. So I put these down and these are recurring events. Right now doing a 10 week lifting program. I'm running twice a week and just having this color coded in this blue color just kind of helps me when I'm looking at my two week view or my week view. I can just look at when I'm working out. I also have a calendar for meal planning. So this is an automation I've created. I have a video on how to set this up, but I, I basically have Todoist and Notion working together to give me automated meal plans. So I know exactly what I'm going to be eating throughout the week. And I typically do this on a Sunday or a Monday where I try to schedule what I'm gonna eat. Automatically tells me what ingredients I need to have, but I have a bunch of different meal plans and I can show you what that looks like. So these are my Notion meals. And like I mentioned, the ingredients are all in here. It's a really cool way to automate meal planning. Again, I have a link in the description below as well as probably up here if you wanna check out that video. So if I just add all these calendars, you could see how much how nicer it looks. I can organize and see where everything is located in the different aspects of my life. If I'm filming, if I'm working out, it just makes it a lot nicer when you have multiple calendars and different colors. Now you can have just one calendar with a bunch of different colors, but you are sort of restricted to just these colors. So that's one of the reasons why you should have multiple calendars. And I think it just kind of helps with, with the labeling of having these different names of the different parts of your life. I think this is really important. I think most people have maybe one, maybe two calendars, but you should really have as many as you can possibly have that, that you can classify in different buckets of your life. Tip number four is adding local weather to Google Calendar. I don't know why this isn't already like a default, but there's a simple way to add the weather. As you could see, I have the weather for the week. The reason why I really love this is, as I mentioned, I run twice a week, or I guess I've, I run three times a week, according to my schedule. And you know, it's gonna be 90 degrees on Tuesday. Maybe I wanna move my running workout to a day that's a little bit nicer, maybe 76 degrees. So this is one of the reasons why I like having weather. You can kind of plan what your week looks like. And if you're gonna do something like outside and it's gonna be raining, you could switch days out or just kind of know to bring an umbrella. I think this just makes it so much easier as you're planning your week to know what the weather looks like. So to add this, it's really, really simple. There's a website called weather-in-calendar.com. I'll have a link in the description below. But basically, you will type in the city you're in, you'll put Celsius or Fahrenheit, and then you'll wanna, if you wanna add lows or highs of the day, and then you'll just add it to calendar. And I've already added this calendar, but you'll click on this and then you will copy this URL link and you'll go back to Google Calendar and you'll just do other calendars like before, before Outlook and we'll, from URL, we'll paste this and it'll automatically add it to your calendar. And the other cool thing is because I have weather on here, I, I typically have Alexa 
tell me my events for the day. And with, when it tells me the events, it also tells me what the weather is outside. So that's kind of cool to have as well. Tip number five is to use Google Calendar's integrations and open API. So what I mean by that is there are websites like Zapier that can connect Google Calendar to your other apps. One of my favorite ones is the integration between Google Calendar and Todoist. And that's what I utilize for my meal planning workflow. And I also connect it to Notion. So Google Calendar connects to Todoist and Todoist connects to Notion. There's also a native sync between Notion and Google Calendar that's coming sometime in 2022. It might already be out if you're watching this video but there's so many developers out there extending Google Calendar's functionality because Google Calendar is the most popular digital calendar app. So you can use Zapier, you can connect it to over 4,000 apps. There's automate.io that also does similar functionality. There's also the ability to do simple things with Google Calendar and make it more of a desktop app. You can put Google Calendar in your doc if you're on a Mac. You can go to Google Calendar here and do the same thing. More tools, create shortcut, and you have Google Calendar. You can also open up Google Calendar using what's called Alfred. And if you aren't familiar with Alfred, it's a replacement for Spotlight on the Mac. So again, this is very specific to the Mac. So if I, if I type in GCal, it automatically takes me to Google Calendar. Just a quick way to get into Google Calendar and not having to use your mouse. The other cool thing about Google Calendar is because it's a web app, it has extensions. So if you go into the Google Chrome store, you can find extensions. Two of my favorites are GCal Plus, and this is what GCal Plus looks like, you can add it. If I hover, to a specific event, it just shows it to me in kind of a bigger font, especially if you have a really long event name, it will show you the entire name rather than being cut off. So I really like that. But if you click on G+, there's a bunch of other little tweaks you can make. So you can customize Google Calendar and kind of extend it. The other one I really like, and this one's so simple, is just duplicate. You can duplicate a, a Google Calendar event. That's all this extension does, but it works really well. So you can go in find an event and you can press this duplicate event button and it'll duplicate the event. Tip number six is not to use Google Calendar's native app if you're on an iPhone. So I think the Google Calendar app on the iPhone is cluttered. I think it's super busy. I don't like utilizing it. My recommendation is for you to use Calendars 5. It is a one-time fee of $4.99 on the App Store and it's an amazing app and it works really well with Google Calendar. If you try using Apple Calendar, you'll have some small issues. One thing is if you use custom colors, those custom colors will not transfer over to Apple Calendar. And my favorite part about this app is the week view. It is the only app I think I know of that has a vertical week view versus a horizontal week view. And it looks really, really nice. Calendar Live also has natural language processing. So what that means is you can type in go for a walk every Sunday at 4 p.m. It'll know exactly what you mean and it'll automatically create that event. You don't have to type in Sundays or uh, go into the custom field and put in every single Sunday. It'll automatically understand that. It's a kind of an advanced feature that you can get from like Fantastical, which is an expensive calendar app that you have to pay a monthly fee for. But Calendars 5 is a one-time fee of $5. It's totally worth it. I've been using it for a couple of years now and it works really well with Google Calendar. So you may have noticed that I don't put tasks or reminders within Google Calendar. I don't use the native uh, task management features that Google has. The reason for that is I'm sort of against the idea of having your tasks within all the different events that, that are happening on your calendar. I think your calendar should be for time specific events and you should utilize your calendar as a way to look at how busy you are and then planning the tasks around those events. If you wanna know kind of more about how I plan my week, here's a video that I talk about how I plan my week and how I use Google Calendar to manage how much I can take on in a given week.